All right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> and uh, I'm looking for my script. There it is. I will call this meeting to order. As a preliminary matter, this is Brendan Tedstone, Select Board Chair. Some members of the Select Board are present in this room with me. Brian Herr, Mary Jo Lafrenier, Amy Ritterbush are here. Erfan Nasrullah will be uh, participating remotely. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah, can you confirm that you can hear me? I can hear you and I am here. Additional speakers this evening may include Kimberly Sierra McCauley, Brian Prescott, Carol Cavanaugh, Peter Lagoy, and Kelly Grill. If there's anyone who would like to speak during public forum portion of the agenda, you must notify the meeting host in advance. You may do so by using the raise hand feature of Zoom. I request a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30, subsection 21A, purpose three, to consider a strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to DPW police, fire, and library unions and negotiations with non-union staff, town manager, fire chief, and police chief, because an open meeting discussion may have detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the board. To approve executive session minutes of April 6, 13, and May 4, 2021, to allow Norman Kamalo and Elaine Lazarus to participate in the discussion and to reconvene an open session at the conclusion of executive session. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Mr. Herr? Yes. Ms. Lafreniere? Yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Headstone, yes. So we are leaving here. We're going to go to a different room, have our executive session, and be back uh, very, very soon. So stand by. Can you for executive session or these are for later? Those are for later. We don't need the, the Maria Casey stuff for executive session, right? All right, Mary Jo. Yes. Welcome to your place. Welcome to Mary Jo.
All right, we're live. All right. So this is Brendan Tedsto. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for Bob. Bob, are we live? Is there a phone on? Through the chair, you're live on HCAM TV. Thank you, sir. Um, so this is Brendan Tedsto, select board chair. Some members of the select board are present in the room with me. Brian Herr, Mary Jo Lafreniere, and Amy Ritterbush. Our friend Nasrula is, per, is participating remotely. Mr. Nasrula, can you hear me? Hmm? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I was just right. <laughs> this open meeting of the Hopkins Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we're complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. The executive order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as the public body makes provisions through adequate alternative means to ensure interested members of the public are provided reasonable access to deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. For this meeting, the select board is convening, convening by video conference via Zoom webinars posted on the town's web meeting calendar and the board's agenda identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting is being broadcast by HCAN. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and some of the attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover the ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite board members to provide any comment, question, or motion. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in dialogue with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Not every agenda item will feature public comment. For the public forum portions of the agenda, the chair will work with the meeting host to call on each speaker to make their comment. Each speaker must begin by identifying their name and address. Each speaker will have up to two minutes for their comments. Please use the raise hand feature of Zoom now to indicate that you'd like to make a comment. Finally, all votes will be conducted by roll call vote. Please let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, Ben, it looks like I have one, two, three, four people on there for hands up. Um, Okay, that's it. So David Stolt will be the last person. Is that David Stolt? Say, say, how do you say the last name? Stead. Okay. All right. So, um, so Evan, unfortunately, uh, we're not going to let you talk it before, but I know that you're on. Uh, I know that you're on for the uh, parade. So, uh, so the first one is, I can't read it. Is it uh, Barat Makela? So uh, Ben, you can go ahead and live in Barat's um, mic up, and let me just uh, let me just pull up my trusty stopwatch so I don't get accused of showing favoritism by certain people. Uh, Barat, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, you're on. You got two minutes. Hi, I'm Barat McCullough, and I'm the vice president of the class of 2023. I'm here today with our secretary, Alice. First off, I would like to thank the select board and the organizers of the Boston Marathon for allowing us to speak today on why we would benefit from a marathon bib. The past year has been difficult for all of us, specifically for the school committee. There were no class dues this year, blocking our class's main source of funding. We have tried our best to raise as much money as we can, despite the difficult situation, and we have had a few successful fundraisers. However, we have not reached our financial goals. A marathon bib would help us offset this loss and is set up and help us set us up in a good position for next year. In addition, because of COVID, it has been difficult to help build the sense of community like we usually do. So rallying around a marathon runner would effectively bring people together, in addition to helping us reach our financial goals. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, that was nice. Um, 
Moving on. Uh, Amy Ritterbush, are you here, Amy? I'm here. Amy, I'm, you're on the clock. Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to say that I, along with many other community members and elected officials, attended the vigil for Michaela Miller on the common a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, it was really nicely well done. And I really appreciate maybe being able to hear directly from Michaela's mom and learn more about her. And, um, you know, my heart really goes out to her and her family. And I hope that she's going to get more information that she needs soon. And I hope that we as a town can learn from this um, and do better. We've lost two children school children this year and it's it's been hard but um anyway thank you to the community for supporting the vigil thank you very much uh david stett you're alive david hi select board it's nice Hello. to see you my name is david stett senior class president of hopkinton high school today as you may have heard we're here to talk about a car parade for the graduating class of 2021 similarly to what occurred last year. Our class secretary, Danny, and I thought we'd run through the details of this event with you today. Our class would be thrilled to have this event. We've lost a lot together this past year, but this would be a really great closing to our time in Hopkinton. So I'll go ahead and just talk about the expectations of this event. And then afterwards, um, Danny Andrews, the next commentator, can go through the details if that's all right. Sure, you got two minutes. You got a minute and a half. All right. So, um, Expectations are just that nobody will be allowed out of their cars at any point, either while lining up on Loop Road or during the parade. Seniors will not be allowed to drive their own vehicles. They must have a family member or a friend to drive them. It's not in the class of 2021. Uh, one vehicle per family. Seniors must wear their caps and gowns. Seniors must sit in the passenger side seat of their vehicle. Uh, all are encouraged to decorate their vehicles, and nobody's allowed to hang outside of their car window, sunroof, or ride in the bed of a truck during this parade. So essentially, we've been really trying to make this a safe, fun event, and uh, I just know that the seniors last year had such a great time together, and we'd be incredibly grateful if this could happen for us again. So uh, that's all I have to say. Um, Danny Andrews is the next commentator, I believe, and he can talk a little bit about the route and details. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, if you could liven up Danny Andrews. That's good. Danny, you're on. All right, uh, thank you for having me. I'm Danny. Uh, I'm the class secretary for the class of 2021. Um, so we're planning on having this parade Saturday, June 5th. Uh, there's currently no rain date because uh, this is our rain date or the, the backup date. Um, so it's gonna be at 10 a.m. Um, people are gonna pull into the high school um, and staff will direct people from there. They're gonna pull into the Loop Road area. So after that, they're gonna take a right out of the high school onto Hayden Row. After that, they're gonna take a left at the light onto Chestnut. After that, they're gonna take a left onto Ash Street and then stay all the way on Ash until Main Street. At Main Street, they're gonna take a left all the way through downtown where they'll then take a right onto Wood Street. After that, they're gonna go left onto Elm Street. And then after that, they're gonna go left onto West Main. After that, it's a right onto Pleasant Street and then a right onto Hayden Road to finish it up. Um, basically, we thought that this parade route was the best one possible because it could allow the students to travel past each of the other five schools in Hopkinton that we've all gone through, Marathon Center, Elmwood, Hopkins, and the middle school. Uh, and that's about it. We'd really appreciate it if we could get the, uh, the okay on this. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. And lastly is Michelle Heavey, or Heaney. You're live, Michelle. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Michelle from Five First Road. Uh, I think I'd like to go off of a comment that um, Amy has kind of started. And I would also say that I'm very thankful for the vigil for Michaela and her mother. And I would also love to push for the select board to continue with resolve on the Map C pledge that they signed back in December. Um, I also wanted to note that her Brian Hur's signature is still missing from the website. And um, I would like to see maybe a stronger commitment or actionable items that our town can do to try to heal and move past some of the um, things that are, or are, are the emotions that are currently being felt by our members. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that will conclude our public forum. <clears throat> um, so I'm gonna go, off script a little bit, and I am going to say 
Uh, tonight is the final meeting that uh, Mr. Herr will be a, uh, a selectman, select board member, chair, chair emeritus. Uh, he is carried, senior parliamentarian. Senior parliamentarian. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I would be remiss as a chair, chairman, chairperson um, to not recognize everything that Brian has done. Um, I will speak for me personally. Uh, he has spent a lot of time behind the scenes kind of teaching me the ropes of what it's like to be a selectman, how to do things the correct way, follow procedure. Um, and uh, for that, I am absolutely forever grateful. He has helped me tremendously as my role as grow as a select person, as well as a, a human being altogether. Um, for what Brian brings to the town is immeasurable. I know there are people that like to sit back and just toss grenades and, and say, no matter what you do, you're wrong. Brian, in every single decision, I can tell you with no reservation that in every, every single decision that I've had uh, to do with Brian in the last five plus years, uh, every one of Brian's decisions has been um, for the best of the, the town of Hopkinton. Uh, it didn't always suit his, um, his agenda and what he needed personally, but he always put the town before himself. Um, the shoes who I guess Muriel is going to fill uh, moving uh, after Saturday are giant. Um, and I, the town is is has is going to experience a massive loss in the knowledge of municipal finance overall how government runs uh, et cetera et cetera so um, I won't sit here and, and I, I know that I can't go over two minutes because people will complain but uh, it's been a real pleasure serving on the board with you thank you very much for everything that you've done for me personally and for the town uh, we will miss you more than you know and uh, I wish you the best of luck Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, and I would be happy to open that up, Mr. Kamalu, or actually the other board, if any other board members would like to say something, they're welcome to. And if not, I will go to Mr. Kamalu. Yeah, I, I would like to add just a just a quick note. You know, the the institutional knowledge that we're losing with Brian is uh, is huge. And I think that his uh, decisions have always been well thought out. We haven't always agreed, but uh, I can always say that uh, his, his decision making was in the best interest of the town and, um, and it's, it's a huge loss. So thank you, Brian, um, you will be, you'll be sorely missed. Thank you, Irfan. Well, I'll say I have enjoyed sitting next to you for the short time we did before COVID came in and uh, the little asides that we had and uh, learning, learning the ropes from you. Uh, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Jo. I will just add, I've always appreciated Mr. Hur's independent spirit and that he, you know, he is not afraid to disagree with someone that he usually agrees with and has, always has a well-reasoned, you know, opinion and not afraid to speak up. I've only been on board this board with you for like for a short time, but I've known you for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kamala. <laughs> yeah, the chair. Uh, Ryan. Norman. I'll miss you. <laughs> on behalf of uh, town employees, town employees, uh, I can safely say, uh, including uh, our colleagues in the school department, uh, we want to thank you for uh, saving distinction. Uh, the professionalism that you brought to our work uh, is unheard of. I always have wondered where do you get the energy? Where do you get the time? Every time I call Brian, he's answered the phone. Every time I've sent an email, he responds. When there's an issue in front of us, I'm sure I'll get a call from Brian at 7.30 a.m. And then at the end of the day, you'll call in to check how I'm doing. I would always miss that. Also, your focus on issues and development interests that move the community forward is something that I always remember. Our first project, we were working on the wastewater treatment facility and that we now hear the field street. And we then moved on to uh, achieving the sewer connection with Milford, mm -hmm. whilst creating jobs at a time when most towns were losing jobs. Uh, right at the uh, height of the 2009 uh, economic crisis. 
Uh, we will also work on other very exciting projects that I believe we will always have Ryan's name and signature on them. Uh, again, thank you. And on behalf of our town employees, we will miss you. Thank you, Norman. I appreciate it very much. That's it. I don't want your head to get any bigger. We do. We have a long agenda, folks. All right. Where are you going? I got a couple ideas. <laughs> you have to bring it over here, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man, that is so cool. That's great. I love it. Thank you very much. I love that. Where did this come from? From us. That's really nice, folks. That is so cool. Very, very nice. Right. That's a pleasant reminder. When I came for my interview, you made me sit on a kindergarten chair. <laughs> <laughs> That is beautiful. Thank you very much. Very unnecessary, but really beautiful. I love it. Really. Is that the, so is that the town? That's the town. Yes, that's yeah. the town. Yeah, that's great. Signed Brian J. Hare. That's really nice. Thank you very much. Very, very You learned it, buddy. Very kind. Thank you so Thank much. You I'll have a few words at the end. Perhaps. My last meeting as a, as a chairman, you may not. That's great. <laughs> really Good. That's awesome. All right, so new employee introduction. Um, meeting host, if you would please bring in Kimberly, Mr. Kamalu, Sierra McCauley. Sierra McCauley. With your permission, Mr. Chair, I would defer to again, Lazarus. Yes, Sierra McCauley. Sierra McCauley, okay. Mr. Kamalu. Hello, Mr. Nice. Uh, I'll let you in. All right. Do you know if Kim is present? Uh, okay, yes. She is, yeah. So um, we're introducing uh, Kimberly Sierra McCauley this evening. Uh, she was recently appointed to the conservation administrator position by the Conservation Commission after a rigorous review process. And we're very excited to have her on board uh, starting May 25th. Um, and she'll be filling in for Don McCann uh, as, he, as he exits. So um, she'll be filling those shoes and uh, there'll be a trans transition period where, where Don will hand things over. So we're very excited to welcome her to the town and looking forward to working with her. Excellent. Good work. Uh, Mr. Kamala, she's already been hired. Everything's all set. You don't need our vote? No. All right. Well, excellent job filling that, uh, those immense shoes to fill uh, so quickly. So uh, Kimberly, we wish you the best of luck and congratulations. So moving on to the consent agenda, the board will consider approving the consent agenda consisting of the approval of minutes of the April 29, May 4, May 8, 2021 meetings approving a 20B exemption to allow the hiring of Renee Cooprider as a temporary per diem counselor, approving a 20B, um, uh, 20B, sorry, exemption to allow the hiring of Thomas Keene, Jean Can, Michael Grieco, Mark Sanborn, Gregory Manko, uh, Chris Banks, Jessica Zwillinger, uh, John Golden, Jay Golden, uh, Chauncey Godet, and William Collins for seasonal summer port, sports clinics, and approving the request for the Hopkins Center of the Arts for wavering for a waiver of building permit fees for the Terry Farmhouse renovation project as it is town property. Board members, do you want to break any of those out? No. no hearing none, so I will request a motion to approve the consent agenda as written. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, Mr. Uh, any, any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Mr. Herr? For yes. Ms. Lafrenier? Mr. Lafrenier, yes. Mr. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Ted Stone, yes. <laughs> parade permit application. <clears throat> Upton High School graduating senior car parade. Uh, uh, ben, if you would bring in Brian Prescott. Um, and if Brian, uh, if there's anyone else who is attending um, with you for this item, uh, bring them into the meeting as well. Um, the application before the board <clears throat> is for a car parade for Hopkins High School graduating seniors and the application contained a detailed description of how the parade would be conducted. The police department has expressed concerns about associated con uh, traffic related impacts and risk management issues. Uh, Mr. So Mr. Kamalu, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
we've had conversations with the police chief and with uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, and we're all set. All the concerns are taken care of. We understand that any of the the, the um, detailed, uh, just give me the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight detailed locations will be staffed appropriately and paid for by the schools and not by the town, and that those details have already been worked out with the police chief and the uh, school superintendent, correct? Correct. All right, great. So that's nothing we need to have a discussion on. Other than that, all the other comments uh, were that uh, they were in, in approval of this. This was something that we had last year. Uh, Brian, if you want to talk, you can. <clears throat> I'm going to try to save you some time here and, and possibly some aggravation. Um, would you like to have a conversation? Uh, actually, we don't see you there, Brian. If you want to hit your raise hand, if you're here. Uh, Yes, I, I, hey everybody, uh, it's Evan Bishop um, from the high school. I don't think Brian Prescott's able to join us. He has a track meet today, so I'm stepping in on his behalf. All right. So Evan, is, um, this went off uh, pretty much without a hitch last year. The only issues were brought to us by the police chief. They've been addressed uh, in an earlier conversation. Um, my suggestion would be to let us put it to a vote real quick and get you out of here. Or if you want to talk about it, you're welcome to it. No, I thought our kids did a great job, so feel free to vote. Great. Uh, so I will request a motion to approve a parade permit for the Hopkins High School graduating senior car parade on June 5, 2021. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Her? Her, yes. Ms. Lafrenier? Lafrenier, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Headstone, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Great. Thank you for the support, everybody. And Brian Hurt, congratulations. Thanks for all that you do. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yep. See you soon. Bye. Trail Coordination Management Committee, Pratt Farm Property. Peter Lagoy will join the board via Zoom to talk about the install of trail signs and the kiosk on the Pratt Farm Property, which is under the jurisdiction of the Select Board. Mr. Lagoy. Hello, board. Um, Hi, Peter. Good to see. You. Good to see you all. Um, I'm here quickly for two reasons with regard to the Pratt Property. One is to ask for your permission as the owner of the land for us to put in signs, a kiosk, and you may have noticed the kiosk has already started going in, and then also possibly some trail markers out in both the main field, but also then the back field. Um, so that's the permission piece of it. And then the second piece is some guidance from you folks, and that has to do kind of with the, the concept of those trail markers. Our feeling in the TCMC is that we should be putting signs in and marking trails for people who are unfamiliar with trails by and large. But we get, I fairly often get pushback from folks who are more trail um, familiar saying, oh, we don't need that many signs. Um, but I think the vast majority of Hopkinton residents would be happier with, with more signs. And I just kind of wanted your folks' opinion and thoughts and guidance on that issue. More signs versus less signs. So, uh, board members, Mr. Nasrula. So, uh, personally, I'm, I'm in favor of more signs. Um, I, I, I know of uh, a friend of mine who was trail running and got lost, got disoriented and ran into all sorts of problems. So more signage definitely would help people get, you know, find their way through. Um, we have an extensive trail network. So I think it just makes absolute sense to be able to let people know how to get from points A to point B, especially when you're in the woods. Full disclosure, Mr. Yep. Nashville, that was not me. That was your friend that got lost running in the trails, correct? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> um, Mr. Herr. Elaine, is this in coordination with Frank D'Urso Jr.'s Eagle Scout project? The kiosk. Kiosk, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been some dialogue about that already today. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with additional signage. I mean, I'd want them to be, you know, in line with the surroundings and so forth, but uh, I think it can't hurt to have them up. I no. agree. I agree. Okay. As long as they're, you know, circumspect signs and not anything yeah. out of the ordinary, yeah. I think it's fine. Yep. Right. I agree. You know, the trail signs are they're not lighted and they're um, very subtle. And I think it's good people to know where the trails are. And as long as they're not too many signs or too large, I think it's fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. And having uh, spent currently spending quite a bit of time out the woods up in Maine, the trails up there are very, very well marked, and um, the signs are not like uh, hand handwritten on a paper plate and stapled to a tree. They were they were done correctly and and effectively, and, and it's uh, they're done nicely. So as long as they're done nicely, I'm good with it too. Okay. So we all said that that we're in favor, and we want to see it look nice. I mean, what what did you have in mind? They're, you're talking about small small wooden signs that would go up. Uh, what, what, what right. Well, the, What's the idea? Right. So the signs by the road are the sort of standard. Um, I just put one up at the Hughes Farm Trail. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're a, a typical sign that you'll see throughout town. And now those are the trailhead signs. And then what we're looking for in the woods is probably small four inch by 12 inch, say. But again, the brown backing yellow lettering for the actual signs, but then also trail markers that are either the, the medallions that the town has or arrows, um, you know, to, to make sure that people who are on the route are comfortable that they're still on the route. Our general guidance is we think that it's important to have to anywhere along the trail be able to see two signs or two trail markers. Um, helps people not feel concerned that they might get lost out on the trail. Um, for Pratt, the issue is around the outer edge. We certainly don't need, you know, medallions very frequently, but we were out there with a, a trails club hike recently. And the thought was that a few medallions, just again, to make people aware that they're on town land, they haven't somehow gotten lost, I think is important particularly for people who are not, um, you know, familiar with trails or used to trails. Great. I mean, that, that sounds about right to me. Good. Good. Okay. Good, Mr. Legoy. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you very much. You need to all right. Up. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. And Brian, enjoy the rest of your last meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Mr. Kamala, we we don't need any vote on that. Okay, so I I will uh, request a motion to Mr. Kamala. How would I phrase that motion? City would authorize the trail coordination management committee to install trail signs, markers, the key and kiosks. Okay. As described by the applicant. So. Um, Second. All right. Any further discussion? None. Mr. Nasrula, how do you vote? Nasrula, yes. Mr. Her? Her, yes. Ms. Lafrenier? Her, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. That's done, yes. Hopkins Center for the Arts request for exception to lease addendum to permit outdoor alcohol service at HCA events at the HCA facility at 98 Hayden Road. Kelly Grill will join the board via Zoom. The current lease addendum allows alcohol service only inside the building and the HCA would like the board to consider allowing service in the area shown on the plan <clears throat> on a plan submitted in the packet. Ms. Grill, would you please uh, describe the uh, request? Absolutely. So we are starting to have events again, come back alive again, uh, and we wanted to do so safely. We did this last year uh, and we've was so popular we want to expand upon it. So we have uh, a number of concerts happening on Friday and Saturday nights all throughout the summer and into September. And what we're looking to do is what is allowed in the lease, which is to serve um, beer and wine with a 12C licensed caterer. But instead of inside, we'd like to do the event outside. We plan to also uh, invite some local food trucks and caterers to provide some food be serving alcohol. Um, we're uh, welcoming local businesses to come and to um, be uh, visible as vendors and, and their company. So the idea is a really community event and the exception, the only exception we're looking for is to be able to serve alcohol outdoors in a uh, designated area. Mr. Kamala. Yeah, the chair. Um... I think it goes without saying that the HCA 
um, has been impacted by COVID-19, similar to any other establishment here in town. Uh, it also goes without saying that as we start thinking about reopening uh, the, uh, the businesses in town, uh, that the cultural aspect of, of Hawking has to be part of that process. And the, the HCA is a key contributor in that regard. Uh, that said, four things to mention. Number one, the list expressly prohibits serving alcohol outside. And therefore, if the board is inclined to accept this request, there has to be an addendum to the list. And my understanding, and, and for the chair, can you feel free to correct me, is that this will be a temporary arrangement purely for this round. That, that's correct. From from now, our plan was from now through um, September and strictly came about because of COVID. All of this being done in the context of addressing the COVID 19 and also celebrating the reopening of the economy of Scotland. Then, secondly, uh, the current list calls out the hours uh, that alcohol can be said uh, at the facility. Uh, and those hours are between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, and 5 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday. This raises the question, uh, if alcohol is being saved after dark, will we be introducing lighting outside the facility? Kelly, can you hear that? You, can you... I, I think so. You're asking about lighting? Yeah, correct. So these events uh, take place between um, 6.30 and 8 o'clock. So they, the alcohol service would end a half an hour before that, which is 7.30. And so likely um, would still be light out. We can consider during those days where it starts to get darker at 8. Our intent was to move the time frame up in September to 6 o'clock so that we would avoid, um, avoid any issues with darkness because we don't have any outdoor lighting for the musicians. Okay. Um, then the next question is that the amphitheater is located within, uh, within 400 feet from the school. Um, we have had two areas of interest in relation to this issue, namely, uh, the specific comments that were provided by the school superintendent. And then secondly, uh, the Alcoholic Beverages Control Act uh, expressly requires that uh, premises located within a radius of 500 feet of a school or church shall not be licensed for the sale of alcoholic beverages unless the local licensing authority determines in writing and after a hearing that the premises are not detrimental to the educational and spiritual activities of the school. Is this the hearing? No. This, this is has not been advertised as a, notified as a public hearing. Okay. <laughs> so there's another step then? It would appear, yes. Okay. Did you hear that, Kelly? Not clearly, no. So it, it looks like in order to, because of the state law, the statute out there that says we can't, allow anybody to sell alcohol within 500 feet of a, a school or church um, without the licensing, licensing authority in writing, giving it to you in writing and have, after having a hearing. And so before we can grant this, this has to go to a public hearing, uh, which would have to be on our, our potentially our next meeting. Um, okay. To have that done. Okay. Okay. So should we table this until the until the next meeting or do you want to? Yes, again, if the board is inclined to allow the request to move forward, two things need to happen. Authorize town manager and town council to revise the list for the temporary accommodation of city alcohol outdoors. And then secondly, prepare for the uh, yeah. Okay. So I would make a motion to do those two things, authorize the town manager. I'm managing town council to do whatever you got to do to the lease 
for this year only and uh, to go ahead and prepare for the meeting of the hearing. Personally, I think if it's set up behind the HCA, near that amphitheater, yes, closer to the schools for just these events this summer, when the kids aren't around, I don't think it should be a big detriment to the education of the kids in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but I wouldn't want it necessarily on the street side or even the loop road side, whatever we call that other road there, because um, this is highly visited, right? So I'd put it around that corner there in the back. Yeah, like, that's right, isn't right it? Yeah, that corner would be too. Over here. Yeah, or there. And that's got to be, um, if this is 400 feet, that's the alcohol consumption area is probably 500 if, on the map, because the amphitheater here is 400 feet. Yeah. And that looks like 100 feet. Yeah. Another 100 feet, more or less. So, uh, sure, you have to have another hearing. I mean, that's good. just dragging this thing on. And Mary Jo point makes a good point. Yeah, no, in, no, in fact, we did measure this. The entrance to the high school is approximately 400 feet. From where? From the amphitheater. From the amphitheater. Yeah, but if you but go the alcohol consumption area is over here. It says designated alcohol consumption area. But that, that's even the closer to the school than the There's a good number of feet between the amphitheater and the alcohol consumption area. Okay. But not much. Yeah. So if they measured it, I think it do <laughs> So we've had a motion and it's seconded. Second. Okay. Any no further discussion? Mr. Nasrula, how do you vote? Uh, Nasrula, yes. Mr. Her? Her, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Frenier? Frenier, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Ted Stone, yes. All right. <clears throat> um, transfer of Section 15 package store alcohol licenses. The board was scheduled to review two separate applications for the transfer of ownership of two package store licenses. However, these items have been postponed to the June 1, 2021 meeting. So we will table that one. Uh, 2021 Boston Marathon Invitational Random Distribution. Uh, the board will hold a public random distribution of marathon invitational entries to qualified applicants for the 2021 Boston Marathon. The materials in our packet indicate the town has received 50 entries and we have application from several town departments and organization entries. The entries must be for town departments, boards and committees that perform marathon functions who may distribute entries to organizations undertaking activities for the benefit of the town of Hopkinton and for nonprofit organizations undertaking public service activities within the town of Hopkinton. Mr. Kamala. Yeah, through the chair in your packet, I included a memo outlining uh, three groupings of respondents. Um, the first grouping includes seven town department requests that we deemed to be responsive. Namely, these are town departments that perform marathon functions directly related to the race. They include the Hockington Police Department, the Hockington Fire Department. The Hockington Senior Center, the Hockington Public Library, the Hockington Marathon Committee, and the Veterans Celebration Committee. We also identified 31 town based non profit organizations that perform public services here in Hockington. I'll read the list for the benefit of the department Bay Path Humane Society, EHO, the Michael Lee's Rescue Center. Project just because National Brain Trauma Society, the Hockington Garden Club, the Hockington Women's Club, the Hockington Lions Club, the Demons Youth Hockey Association, Mental Health Collaborative Inc., Hockington High School, Class of 2023, Friends of Hockington SIPA. Formerly friends of Hockington Spear, Hockington Education Foundation, Hockington PTO, the High School Robotics Team, Dignity Matters, the Hockington Girls Youth Lacrosse, Hockington Boys Youth Lacrosse, King's Underdog Scholarship Fund, Hockington Middle School, the Hockington Emergency Fund, 
the Hopkinton Little League, Friends of the Hopkinton Senior Center, Friends of Hopkinton Inc., Hopkinton Public Library, Friends Inc., Hopkinton Public Library Foundation Inc., Live for Ivan Inc., the 80th Annual Sharon Kingdom Memorial 5K Race, Keep Smiling for Abbey Foundation, and finally, the Hopkinton Historical Society. There were two non responsive, oh, sorry, non responsive or uh, ineligible applications. Uh, Graves Officer. Why this is a town position, it does not perform any direct support service for the hosting of the marathon. And then, secondly, and it's said that it's linked to service, the town of Hopkinton has to live committee. Their application came in after the submission date. Which committee? The the tax tax the okay. their only way of raising any money because they can't solicit well. anywhere from anybody. And uh, and I, I re realized the reason for this is because John Palmer moved out of town. And he's pretty much been that committee yeah. for a long time. So uh, I'd like to kind of wave that one if possible because the people that apply for that tax committee are really, really a destitute population. Mr. Kamala, how many how many total do we have? How many total numbers do we have to give out? 50. 50 total. That includes the 23 town requests and the 31. So I, I only count 30 on, on this on this list. I only count 30. Did you count that other one that got their application in less? Yeah, the, the 31 includes the if the if the board is inclined to accept the the graves officer as a non town department. The way it took the graves on. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So I guess first of all, <clears throat> what we need to do is are there any on this list of the nonprofits that the board would like to call out? So I believe last year we did something with the Public Library Friends Incorporated and the Foundation Incorporated, where we combined those two into one, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Yeah, Kamala? Yeah, in, in fact, I, I, I simply covered for a plan. Uh, we, did, we did provide uh, two options that the board could look into. Uh, the first option is to prepare the uh, entries to the data responsive nonprofit applications, yes. which is being the most and yeah. apply the requirements, setting the policy. Uh, then that leaves 20 numbers to be distributed to the company. Okay. So, which has been about the average the last couple of years, correct? Correct. So, I think it was 31, 19. So this year, if this was in any other committee, I, I, I would say fine, but because um, they are not allowed to solicit anywhere or ask for money from anybody, uh, it's been really, you know, difficult for them. And uh, like I said, the, the people who apply, it's the last few to work. I would agree with you, Joe. Yeah, agree with you, I think, as I said, Joe. I'm with you in supporting the committee. So, uh, they they do have a source of funding that they can secure. Um, however, they would benefit from additional funding. Uh, the other funding is from uh, the laborers. Um, I, I know that they say sometimes they get money from laborers. Yes. Yeah. But they uh, say they'll be doing that. <laughs> they have been, they have been years because of, of this lack of, of uh, ability to solicit where they haven't been able to give very much money uh, and because of the number and things it has gone up to like 500 uh, but there were years when it was down to 100 dollars or, or less per person supplied so uh you know, it's, it's their main source of funding, and it's only like two or three members. And John, like I said, John has left town, and that was the reason for the set for. Mr. Kamala, uh, Hopkins High School class of 2023. I know that we have spoken in years past where we would allow these people to potentially apply for a number once. Um, have they, as a class of 2023, uh, been a, pre, a prior recipient of a uh, of a number? 
These are the junior class, right? Well, current sophomores will be juniors next year. I think that's a new class because 2019 did, 2020 did. Yeah. I don't think it's a repeat, that's for sure. It's 2023. Really. Yeah. We, well, we do have two representatives from 2023 on the call. We could ask them. I don't think we do. I think those are the 2021s. No, they're, I, I knew them. They were oh. 2023. The 2021s are the seniors for the parade. Okay. They weren't there for the marathon. Yeah, um, Barat has his hand up. All right. Uh, ben, if you would liven up Barat's uh, microphone. It's all set. Barat, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Barat, um, question for you. Um, prior to this year, has the class of 2023, to your knowledge, uh, been a recipient of a charitable number from the marathon? No. Last year we applied, but we did not receive one. That's a, that's because last year, the, the other class, right. yeah, the juniors. Yep. Right? Okay. okay. Good. So these guys will be juniors next year. Yep. And we're saying that they get it once so that yeah, you, they know so they you, get it now, they won't get yeah, it. Yeah, you won't get it. If we do grant it to you this year, you wouldn't get it next year. Okay. Potentially, I cannot speak for next year's board um, <clears throat> or for the amount of numbers that we have get next year. So uh, I would be inclined to um, to look at this list of 30 that I have in front of me. Um, and again, take that Hopkins Public Library, the two requests from the Hopkins Public Library and combine those into one, whichever one that we would find, we would deem to be appropriate. Combine that into one, throw the, um, the um, tax relief, the senior, what is that one called, Mary Jane, Mary Jo? Tax uh, relief committee. Throw that one in there in lieu of that, because the library is also getting two other ones up top. Um, no. no, the library, if, if I may, it's checked. The next page. Uh, look at option number two. Option number two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 One class. Okay. Also, the friends of the senior are in the second group. They still get two. So, okay. A question for you, and, and I'm not trying to. to I, I would like to know why the police department is getting ten. The fire department is asking or asking for ten. Uh, the fire department is asking for two. And when we cut, we cut half of the fire departments and none of the police. <laughs> I can explain. Um, the the police department. Previously, to get about 15, 16 numbers. Yeah. Okay. They assign those numbers to the partners that come in here and volunteer to support <laughs> the mother. They volunteer? <laughs> yes, okay. And no. okay. <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Um, the, the, the fire department, based on my discussions with uh, Chief Slam, uh, his family. Okay. Members, and last year, I, think he I believe so too. Yep. Yes. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that it was equitable and, and everybody was in agreement. But in option two, they only have one number. You're saying. Yeah, but he said that the chief is fire chief is okay with, with one? dropping down to one. Dropping out of it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> There's um, no question the police from all over yeah. you know, the region come. And it's it's been a, a long practice. Even when we we got our hands around this whole process. There was a time when we had zero involvement in this and there was just numbers flying everywhere. Um, even back then we got uh, a lot of information about why the police numbers were so important to keep going. Yep. Again, the, the board says the policy is the end of the process. It's your policy, you can weigh it if you so choose. And we've provided you two options. One that complies with the policy and the other one that accommodates the two um, so option number two in, in, includes the graves officer and the uh, tax relief. Tax relief. Tax relief. 
<laughs> and then has these as as written. Okay. So I would be inclined to go with number, make a motion for number two. Um, okay. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. So, <clears throat> um, so Mr. Nasrula, if you've missed some of this, um, the board is inclined to accept the non uh, the non-responsive application. Uh, the following. Uh, so we're going to give to the 31 nonprofits and the one veteran graves officer and the remaining 18 to town departments who perform marathon service distributed as follows. Hopkins Police 10, Hopkins Fire 1, Senior Center 1, Marathon Committee 5, and the Veteran Celebration 1. That motion has been made and seconded. And um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. That, um, that Frankly, that's the way I was leaning up as well. Um, had a little difficulty hearing Mr. Kamalu and all the discussion, but uh, it, it sounds as though this is uh, this is exactly where I was going with it as well. Great, uh, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. To her, her yes. Mr. Frenier. Frenier, yes. Ms. Ritterbush. Ritterbush, yes. Mr. Judstone, yes. So, so it be written. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, elementary school building committee appointments, Mr. Kamalu. When we were um, we only received three applications. Committee that is pretty significant and doing substantial work for the community. Uh, and my recommendation is that the, the board authorize the town manager and the school superintendent to uh, extend the application period, socialize the concept, and bring back uh, qualifying candidates uh, at the future meeting. Great. Would there be a new deadline that we could start spreading around? Yes, we, we would discuss that deadline with the superintendent and Shay. And you'll send it out. Okay. Mr. Hearn, your final meeting. Um, I'm, I'm uh, wondering if you'd be inclined to make this potentially a national search to uh, get members of the elementary school building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ben, if you could um, liven up Maria Casey or Carrie, however you pronounce her last name. Um, Town manager, police chief, and fire chief performance evaluations. The board will conduct FY21 performance reviews of the town manager, fire chief, and police chief. Um, note for the board the FY22 goal setting will be at the next meeting, June 1. 2021. Hello, Maria. Okay, good talk. Uh, we'll yeah, good home. evening. There you are. Uh, let me see. So it looks like we got the police, fire, and all right. So, uh, board, uh, Maria, if you would you like to kind of set the table here for us? Sure. Um, you know, as, as has been the practice for the last five years, um, individual board members um, provide feedback on the evaluation on the town standard form, and the HR director merely compiles all of the information. So if each board member, you know, would like to take each um, fire chief, police chief, and town manager and kind of give a brief summary, um, if the chair would like to read the overall compiled summary, and then if the board members would like to um, assign a rating. Okay. And I don't know if um, the, the first one that just happens to be on the list is Fire Chief. I don't know if Chief yep. Slayman is in the room. Chief Slayman or Slammon? Slayman, Another. excuse me. Ben, is he live? Is he on? He may not be on. Okay. Still Bennett's on. Yeah, it's okay. I, I don't know if, I thought Chief Slamet was here, but. Um, so maybe we can, let's uh, let's go to, to uh, Joe Bennett first, Chief Bennett on the police, if the board is so inclined. Uh, Chief Bennett, are you with us? Or are you against us? He's up. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Board. Chief, good evening. How are you? Hi, Chief. You doing okay? Good. Welcome. <clears throat> um, so, I guess, so we all have our, 
Uh, Maria, if I'm not mistaken, these um, these packets that we have, each of these packets that we have with our initials on them are our own. Um, no, they're the compiled. They're compiled. Yes, the synthesized, uh, you know, evaluation okay. and whatever the board votes tonight, um, they'll be finalized. Hopefully the board um, will approve for the chair to sign the final version, you know, once I've had an opportunity to finalize them based on all of your feedback. Um, so Mr. Kamala, would I be, do I read this out loud or? Um, you may you may select uh, specific sections to read out. You don't have to read out it. Okay. So um, the key position responsibilities, um, uh, command management of police service incident COVID nineteen response, member of HEMG implemented safe policies and practice, provided personnel to health department efforts and in reopening of businesses, school and town buildings, the police chief should continue to lead by example. Um, the next is the budgetary financial administration. This was the chief's first full fiscal year as budget and police, as police chief. And uh, I believe that we as a board will all agree that he did fine uh, in that. Uh, personnel administration and board members, please. I don't mean to speak for you. If anyone has a disagreement with with my synopsis at the end of the at the end of the read, please speak up. Um, <clears throat> personnel administration. Uh, the chief onboarded three new officers. Uh, developed a new developed an officer wellness program to address stress in the work environment. Developed a five year strategic plan, and he. The police chief should organize the Hopkins Police Department team and budget accordingly with public safety needs and work with all members to create a stronger team. Uh, on your supervisor and leadership, the chief has met with all personnel, conducted regular meetings with the command staff, um, and was a founding member of the Hopkins Freedom Team. Um, and chief, the same thing, if, if uh, as I read something, if there's something that you don't agree with, please let me know. Um, Thanks, uh, staff development. The staff participated in 3,700 plus hours of training, complete, uh, created an elder affairs officer and a civil rights officer, and public relations HCAM appearances. Uh, Chief attended numerous community events, continued communications with media. The police has learned a lot this year with number of opportunities presented. Uh, chief should continue to strengthen PR over the next year. The police chief should prioritize keeping the public well informed so the community feels secure, especially during times of crisis. Um, the, the, uh, the department under the chief's guidance has achieved full accreditation and uh, the interaction with the town manager and the board meets bi-weekly with the town manager, monthly senior leader meetings, weekly HEMG public safety building feasibility team, and a member of Hopkins Organizing for Prevention Working Group. Uh, and I know that uh, for me specifically, uh, anytime there's a, a, a Sentinel event that goes on in town as the, uh, as the liaison and, and chair, he lets me know uh, what's going on uh, post haste. Um, for annual goals or other accomplishments, <clears throat> um, as the first year police chief, we did not set, uh, we did not establish set goals per se, Rather, first year employees goals are to maintain the department's productivity and regularly sharing knowledge and outcomes, translating Hopkins learnings into effective processes and decisions that enable overall, overall town strategy, especially with the regard of how the department can become champions for engagement, trust and transparency, meet with all staff to build higher level of trust, build and maintain strategic collaborative and constructive relationships with internal and external customers, positively influence and motivate those around you, transfer experience and new ideas into quality work output with innovation, consistently produce quality work and manage additional tasks or practices, paying attention to delivery of completed assignments and timely follow-up, implement department uh, procedures to enhance the department's institutional capacity and customer service, and consider areas where employees exhibited collaboration, entrepreneurship, innovation, and continuous improvement. Um, the chief's uh, three most important achievements or contributions that directly supported the town or department strategy or goals. Uh, 
during the review period. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five. Um, protected the staff and community during the pandemic while maintaining the highest possible level of service. Uh, police chief learned the, for public relations, learned the importance of timely, effective and efficient public communications about incidents. Uh, he also created a feeling of safety for the community and staff during a period of in, intense social justice focus on policing in America. Joe's efforts are recognized as he has participated in community events with community friendly presence and his involvement in the Hopkins and Pledge and diversity awareness issues. <clears throat> uh, as we said earlier, he did well with his budget. Um, he created the Elder Affairs and Civil Rights Officer and modified existing policies to come into compliance with legislative police reform long before time mandated by law. Uh, suggestions for improvement. <clears throat> Create the police department in the chief's own image, develop a career development plan for staff, uh, make public more aware of what the department is doing, especially as it relates to new initiatives such as elder affairs and civil rights officer and basic police procedures and policies as to what is or is not allowed in police law or unattended deaths. Uh, although Hopkins has a reputation as the safest town, not everybody in town feels safe as others do. Uh, some work needs to be done with marginalized groups actively seeks out grants that may not be readily available for municipalities or police departments to reorganize and update the police website, fix broken links, et cetera. So, oh, is that it, please? Oh, so, Mr. Kamala, would we go do the overall summary now or are we gonna discuss any of these? Do we have to, Maria, do we need to, to so for part four, list up to three areas, we have one, two, three, four, five. So do we need to choose three of those five? At the board's pleasure. Well, I wouldn't call it pleasure. But <laughs> Desire, uh, wish. Um, all right. So <clears throat> out of those, you, you have those in front of you. So if, if, um, if we look at that group part four and go one, two, three, four, and five. So if we go Irfan Nasrullah, Brian Herr, Mary Jo Lafrenier, Amy Ritterbush, and then Ted Stone. <clears throat> so if we go just a simple tick sheet, one, two, three, four, five. Um, Mr. Nasrullah, of those five um, suggestions for improvement, we need to choose three. Are there three that you would like to put on for us yes. to work. Yes. So I would say um, number two, three, and five. Okay, Mr. Herr? Um, one, two, and three. Ms. Lafreniere? I, uh, well, three, I definitely want to say. Um, and I just wanted to. One, two, three. Ms. Ritterbush? I uh, definitely think two and three. And then let's see. I had actually thought the reorganizing website was mine, but that could potentially be wrapped into one of the others because it's kind of tangential, but um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say two, three, and five. Oops, that's a two, three, and five. And I am gonna say one, uh, four, and five. So that looks like we have Three for number, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like one, two, three for number one, one, two, three, four for number two, uh, one, two, three, four for number three, one for number four, and three for number five. So two and three are in. Uh, so now we have to make a decision on numbers one and five. <clears throat>
So, um, Mr. Nasrullah, if you were to choose one um, out of either number one or five. Uh, so I think we could probably wrap number five into number one and creating the, um, you know, creating the police department chief's own image and uh, hopefully his image is a repaired website. <laughs> Okay. I mean, number five, in my view, is a very administrative matter. It's not really a sort of HR goal. It's tangential, I guess. Or area yeah. for improvement thing, you know? It's so I, I'd go with number one then. One, Brian? One. Mary Jo? One. Amy? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, Maria, um, so we are going to say his three uh, areas where the chief could improve. Create the police department in the chief's own image and develop a career development plan for staff. Uh, make the public more aware of what the department is doing, especially as it relates to new initiatives such as elder affairs and civil rights officer and basic, poli uh, basic police procedures and policies as what is or is not allowed in police law on attendant deaths. And uh, number three, which is although Hopkins has its reputation as the safest town, not everybody feels safe as others do. Uh, some work needs to be done with marginalized groups. You get that? I do. Thank you. All right. So overall summary, uh, the police chief has done a very good job in his first year, and especially where the, develop, uh, the department has been short-staffed in command. In addition, this has been a very tough year, tough first year as police chief, with so much going on in the world, with COVID and social justice. Hopkins Police Department provides vital services to the community. Much of what Joe has learned will make him make he and the Hopkins Police Department stronger in the years ahead. The police chief has done a lot of great work in, the, in a number of programs and initiatives, such as vaccination programs, birthday parades, Hopkins High School graduation parades, and keeping the community's spirits up. The Hopkins Police Chief should continue to lead this community as one of the safest and show by example, the Commonwealth how to create a number one safest community, not only in the state, but in the country. Um, so, um, I guess, does the board, Mr. Nasrullah, is there anything you'd like to say to the chief? Um, I mean, I think it's been a, a difficult year, um, especially for the first year. Um, it's, it's really, I think you really had your hands full with the social justice and everything else going on. So uh, I think you've done a fantastic job and i um, excited that you're, you're on board and excited that we have a partner in, in dealing with all these things. Fine. I think that uh, Chief Bennett has done an excellent job in year one. Uh, it's never easy to imagine what a job's going to be like until you sit in the seat. I think uh, some of my colleagues have even shared that with me over the years about what it's like to get elected to the board. He thought it was one thing, or he or she thought it was one thing, but it turned out to be a little bit different. Uh, I think that would apply to being a police chief in a rapidly growing community uh, with a very um, uh, strong-minded uh, public uh, general will out there of what's to be expected of our police department. I think that um, the, the challenges the chief faced in year one uh, would be a challenge for anybody in year five or 10. And uh, for him to do it uh, as well as he did, in my view, uh, in that first year is, is a testament to what's to come. And I think that uh, he learned a lot as we all did. Uh, and I think that he'll do fabulous in the years ahead. And that's why I, uh, I feel very strongly about uh, uh, my rating for him anyway. And uh, just one last comment, this public process of evaluating people in their job is awkward to say <laughs> the least. Um, we do this in the private sector every day, but we have this thing called a door and we close it and we have one-on-one -on -one conversations with folks and we help them and they help us as employees to you know, become better in what we do. Uh, in the public sector, we have to do it in public. Uh, and so it is awkward and Chief, uh, please know that we feel that too, but uh, I think you're doing a great job. Uh, don't worry about some of the concerns that have been expressed. I think the PR thing is, is a legit concern, but I see, I'm seeing you growing out every day, literally. Uh, so I think uh, keep at it and uh, there's, there's a lot of good years ahead. Thank you. Mary Jo? I, well, I agree. I think it was a little difficult. This is only my second time doing this. Uh, not having the goals sheet 
from last year to go through and say, okay, this was done, this was done, this was done. However, I think that the chief has done a great job in so many areas uh, for, <laughs> for his first year. And you, <laughs> you do need uh, a, a few little things, but they're small, I think. Um, public relations is always going to be a stickler with the police department. And um, I think you're doing an overall very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Amy? Yeah, I'm going to echo what everyone else said. It's been an extremely tough year, especially for your first year in the role as chief. And so and I was really impressed reading through the uh, self-assessment and how many things you have done this year. So I think that's just where the PR piece is key that people need to know more what you're doing because it's been such a crazy year. Um, and yeah, but it's a great, first job, great year and the first job as chief. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with the goals. Thank you. So, Chief, I—I um, I mean, you're our guy. We, uh, you know, we're we're happy to have you. We're lucky to have you. Uh, I know that I think the world of you as a uh, as a chief, as a, a longtime officer, and as a uh, friend. Um, you did your job as the chief in this department uh, all year without a deputy chief, which the last chief did not do. Um, yeah. So. Uh, you also, I, I know that there were, there, there were also some other things that came up where you were, where you were minus, uh, uh, most of your senior leadership and, um, you know, in all our conversations that we had, and I apologize if we had more than you wanted to, um, but in all the conversations that we had, not once did you complain that you're understaffed or, or that you, that, that you didn't have the resources that you needed to, to get things done. Um, when that hiring freeze went into effect, you know, you, uh, you just, you just put your nose to the grindstone and kept on, on chugging and, and, uh, you've done a great job, uh, moving the, the town forward and, uh, you know, the, um, in these, in these goals, it's probably not a surprise where I said, uh, I want you to make this, um, this department yours. I want you to put your stamp on it. I want you to be the cop and I, I don't, I want you to be the chief that, in 15 years, these new guys are coming in and, and I want you to be the new Tom Irvin. Uh, I want you to be the guy that, uh, that people are aspiring to be. And I, and I don't think that that's a, a, a hard goal to, to, to achieve. Uh, you have always led by example and, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more than confident that you will. Uh, and now that you, we're gonna have your goals in, in place, uh, you'll show us how you can, how you can uh, crush them, so. Uh, that's about all that I have there. So we have five ratings that we're gonna give you. Um, one does not, achieve, does not achieve expectations. I would assume that if you, you or any employee in this town was in the does not achieve expectations and you have not gone through the appropriate uh, progressive discipline that, that, uh, that we would not be doing our job, you probably wouldn't be here if you did not ex uh, achieve your expectations. So you're good there. Achieves some expectations, uh, achieves most, uh, achieves and sometimes exceeds, and exceeds expectations regularly. <clears throat> uh, the the uh, the hat that I wear is the uh, middle of the road guy. I have never ever given and exceeds expectations ever uh, in my professional or as my uh, municipal career. Um, so. Out of the board, it looks like we have three of the five that have given you achieves most expectations, which is right in the middle of the road. Um, and so that would give you a, a, a you know, that you're, that you're doing a good job. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say to us, Chief? <clears throat> Excuse me, yes, through the, through the chair. Um, you know, any success that I achieved is most largely due to uh, so many people, uh, the, the staff of the police department, the staff of the communication department, the boards that I've worked collaboratively with, uh, boards, committees, the senior leaders, uh, you, you and, and the select board, uh, Mr. Kamalo, um, uh, Ms. Laz Ms. Lazarus, uh, the list is, is so long and I know I'm gonna forget, um, Youth and Family Services and, uh, you know, first and foremost, I just want to thank 
everybody for the support, including the community, who is actually the most important part of the success of any, any police department. So, and or any police chief. So I just want to make sure that you have a moment to say that. Great. Thank you, Chief. And that is the, the mark of a, a great leader. Anybody that will defer the, uh, the accolades and take the, take the heat. And that is why we are so happy to have you as a chief. Um, so Maria, we are going to give an overall, how do we give this overall rating? Is it one, two, three, four, five, five being the highest? Um, or, uh, in the past, it has been consensus. So um, I don't know if Mr. Nesrula wants to weigh in, um, oh, but Mr. Her um, has achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations. And Ms. Ritterbush, Ms. Lafreniere, and Mr. Ted Stone have achieves most expectations. So um, it, it would be a three, three vote, if you will. Um, so I would like to weigh in, um, and I would like to go with the achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations. Um, and the reason for that, uh, just to explain myself, is um, Chief Bennett was, as soon as he got on, came on, he was faced with, with the whole social, social justice issues. Um, this, this was a nationwide movement, and he handled it with grace. Um, he was supportive of, uh, of basically all sides. And I think uh, if that's not exceeding the expectation of something that wasn't expected, I don't know what is. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I guess, so I, I know that I did my, uh, my review quite a ways back before all this other stuff that went on in the last few weeks here. And um, I have... I have a, um, I think I have a change of heart. I think I would like to move over to the uh, achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that, I know that that's what I want to do. And I have a, um, you know, I, I was able to, to, to work with, uh, with the chief and, uh, and watch how how his staff worked with uh, multiple departments, uh, multiple agencies, and how seamless um, a, a, uh, an event that they, that they had ran. I mean, absolutely seamless. And um, I, I think that that definitely catapulted him over to the achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations. So uh, I guess, I would try to make that three votes for, or not votes. Yeah. Actually, do we, do, do we vote this, Mr. Kamal? The vote means a consensus around the rating. Okay. And then and that's, that consensus is then submitted to, as, the, as the evaluation. Correct. So we don't have to vote the, we don't have to vote the rating. So I guess you could the evaluation. This vote the evaluation. Okay. So this is really what we vote. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Mary Jo and Amy, do you have any um, objections to moving the chief to, or, or to giving the chief a uh, achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations? No, I know. I don't really, I guess I was thinking if for, for someone's first year, you know, there's nowhere to go, you're already at the top. So I think yeah. the middle of the road is good for a first year, but I, I certainly agree it's been a okay. really tough yeah. first year. So I can understand the exception in this case. Good. So then it'd be four out of five if you put a number. Yeah, or 80%. Or 80%, thank you. Murray, are you good with that? Yes. Okay. Whew, that's so a Mr. Chair, I, vote, I move that we advance the uh, uh, um, employee uh, performance reform and information to, to, to Chief Bennett uh, with, a, uh, with a rating, an overall rating, of the keys and sometimes exceeds expectations, but we don't want to be on a scale of four out of five numerically. Second. Okay. Does that need to vote, Mr. Kamala? Yes. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote, Mr. Nasrullah? Nasrullah, yes. Mr. Her? Her, yes. Ms. Lafreniere? Lafreniere, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Headstone, yes. All right. Uh, so, Moving on to the uh, Chief Slammon with us. Yes. I am here. Chief, how are you tonight? 
I'm wonderful. I apologize for the glitch to get started. All right, we'll take it out of your pay. <coughs> Drops you from clearly outstanding. <laughs> um, all right, so we needed to list uh, four to six of the most important aspects of the individual or I guess this is uh, the chief, the chief listed four to, uh, four to six, right? The board, the board. The board did, okay. Um, so uh, so the, the chief in, uh, attended numerous boards and committee meetings to both listen to what is going on and stay well informed. He's been visible in the community and is seen as approachable by residents. He met the need of uh, the emergency medical director's participation and the fire chief's direct, uh, participation in the COVID vaccination program, which was must appre much appreciated by the residents. The department was capable to adapt to the needs of the community during the pandemic. They were clearly well-trained and prepared, uh, which is a credit to Steve. And Steve's leadership is by example. In addition, he led the community during the challenging COVID year. Steve's leadership is effective and appreciated and the development of the fire department personnel. Uh, he made great strides with the personnel. The chief's commitment to the staff is paying off in dividends. He should continue to further build personnel and the budget around uh, the realities of public safety issues in town. Uh, so the chief had three goals for us, the public safety community services feasibility study. Uh, he studied the current public safety systems response capacity for uh, and facility for facilities for needs studied collaborative solutions with community services, developed a proposal including findings and options for the future public safety service plan and its integration with the community. A uh, report produced by De Gregorio Associates is complete. The study is complete and should be publicized on the town's website and socialized more widely to the community. That was goal one. Goal two is collaborated with Eversource on the ERP and notifications. Collaborated with Eversource effectively to complete their emergency response plan, including other related safety review needs, association with the, LN, uh, with the LNG facility. Eversource has completed a draft version of the ERP to the existing facility in the collaboration with the Hopkins Fire. That's complete. Uh, great progress was made this year. The chief stood his ground well. Uh, the chief's commitment to the town is evident in keeping the community safe. And the COVID management plan is goal three. Uh, he demonstrated a leadership commitment, a lot of logistical backing required for the planning and support of the health department in response to COVID. Um, his incident action plan, coordination of recovery plan, town continuity of operations plan, uh, complete non, it was complete and ongoing. Excellent work by the chief and the department in this difficult year. <clears throat> so uh, part three is the summary of key accomplishments. Um, the three most important achievements and contributions that directly supported the town or department strategy or goals during the review period. Uh, the chief collaborated with Eversource and improved communications. Uh, the chief worked with the health department collaboration during COVID. His commitment to teamwork enabled the vaccination of over 60% of the population. Fire personnel employee development plans. Chief has steadfastly built a stronger team. Um, suggestions for improvement. <clears throat> Uh, the public is unclear on what information goes in the fire EMS public log versus the police log. The fire chief should work with the police chief to clarify this. In addition, the fire EMS logs are not easily searchable and not on translation friendly or ADA accessible. Uh, the fire chief should collaborate with police chief and communications director to determine a better format. Um, and then the overall summary. Uh, the chief has done excellent work and has great communications with the community. The fire chief provided fantastic service with regard to many of its COVID mandates. He met all department goals and manages a well-run department. Chief is always poised under pressure. He's effective at utilizing the past as, as foresight during challenging times. The fire chief willingly took on the pandemic and responded selflessly doing some of the work of others while refusing to take credit for what's viewed as their successes. In his role, the chief has done an outstanding job in his role as fire chief. The board is proud of his work and the great deal of knowledge he has. He would be missed if he leaves. Um, so the overall rating, oh, this is beautiful. Um, 
So, uh, <clears throat> Chief, as I said to uh, Chief Bennett, uh, there are five uh, categories to which you will fall into. Uh, you'll fall into one, uh, does not achieve expectations. Uh, that is, you would not be here if you were in that category. Achieve some expectations, achieves most expectations, achieves and exceeds expectations and regularly exceeds um, the broad impact on the organization. Um, Mr. Nasrullah, would you like to weigh in? I don't have your... Uh... Yeah, sorry, it didn't get in. But, um, you know, I think uh, it's hard to argue with, with everything that Chief Slayman's done in this, in this year. Uh, not only did he meet his goals, uh, but he, he met them and, and killed it during a year where we're all doing everything over Zoom. So it's been incredibly challenging, and um, I think he's done a fantastic job. Uh, I, yeah, I think uh, he's, he's clearly met his goals and exceeded them in my mind. Okay. So you are uh, on, the, on the exceeds expectations regularly? I am. I'm on the exceeds expectations regularly. And we in uh, FYI, we in public safety, we try to stay away from the term. He killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so it looks like the uh, the achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations. There was one board member who chose that. Uh, that would be me. Uh, and the exceeds expectations regularly. Uh, is uh, Amy Ritterbush, Brian Herr, Mary Jo, and Erfron. So, um, so Chief, would you like to, to say anything to us before we uh, before we work on this um, determination for you? Um, yeah, maybe a couple comments. Um, you know, Mary Jo did mention last year about this uh, getting the information out and the log out. And I know it wasn't delivered, so I, I totally get that uh, in your responses. Um, it wasn't without some effort, I could assure you, uh, but we, we got work to do. Um, I think my thanks has to do with, it's just amazing what our Hawking and Emergency Management Group did this year. You know, that allowed me to kind of move around a lot and uh, because we just had such a cohesive team that met every single week and reviewed you know, what our needs were and what our actions items are for the week and uh, just kept going and going and going. Um, and we helped each member with the stresses that we were going through, just keep accomplishing the best we could uh, facing the pandemic and then facing our normal everyday work that we had coming. So I just want to pass my thanks out to that whole group. It was just amazing to work with them. We train a lot every year in the background and it's hard to keep doing it, but this was the big dance, you know, this was like town meeting for Mr. Kamalo, um, you know, and our group really all year is gone and they're still in the game. We have unbelievable attendance every week and I just wanna thank everybody. That's from, you know, my staff, but uh, up above everybody did all the work and I just wanna thank you, thank you, thank you. So appreciate the opportunity. Great, Mr. Nasrilla. Yes. Would you like to say something? Um, I, I mean, I've said my piece. I, I think he's uh, he's exceeded his expectations, and uh, he yeah, I, I still stand by that. He did him for the right uh, 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 around the horn, Mr. Herb. Uh, I think the uh, evaluation speaks for itself uh, in terms of the number of folks that land on five out of five uh, for the chief. Um, crazy year. Uh, fire department is calm and steady throughout the whole thing. Uh, I'm not aware of any of our team members that actually got sick. I could be wrong there, but I know we had good staffing. Never heard of a real staffing problem. Uh, that in itself is a huge credit to how the places were run. Police department as well, town hall. I mean, we kept everything going this year uh, with personnel, which is really amazing. Um, so I think he's done a fabulous job. And, uh, uh, you know, it would be tough if he were to leave at some point. Ms. Lafreniere. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that uh, because I had noticed it and I was going to say something about it, but then I realized and I see you everywhere this year. Uh, and I'm grateful to Fire Department for my shots. Uh, and because of COVID and because I know how hard you've been working and what you've been doing, I decided to let it go. <laughs> and uh, 
I just want to thank you for everything. Great job. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, he's done an excellent job this year. He's met all his goals, despite it being a really hard year. Um, and I think, yeah, I definitely stand by the exceeds expectations regularly uh, for this year's rating. All right, so Chief, I will, uh, will, will definitely say that you have made this department yours. Um, your dedication, I would say, is unparalleled. I don't know of, of uh, anybody that, that has given more uh, time percentage-wise of their life each year uh, to the town as you do. Uh, you're at most meetings. Um, you're at every event. You're you just you you do everything right, and um, you know, your your department is a, a well-oiled machine. You, you you lead by example, um, and um, I'm proud to uh, I'm proud to have you as our chief. Uh, I don't. Um, I know that that uh, you know you you following in in, uh, in Chief Clark's footsteps, uh, Chief McMillan and Chief Stewart and Chief Doherty. I guess um, you learned uh, you learned by their examples. Uh, you also learned a little bit at home uh, with your dad and with uh, with your grandfathers being such high ranking uh, members of other towns fire departments. So uh, if anyone ever ever question if it's in your blood. Um, you're, it, it, it's in your blood. So uh, you've done a, a, a good job. Uh, I am still not going to give you the uh, exceeds expectations regularly because I never have and I never will. Um, but uh, I think that we can go ahead and go for a consensus here and um, say that, um, that uh, Mr. Herr, why don't you make the motion? So Mr. Chair, I move that the uh, board advance the evaluation for Chief Slammon to uh, the HR Director uh, specifically showing the majority of the board, the significant majority of the board uh, rates the chief uh, in category five out of five and that he's done an excellent job and uh, look forward to his continued service in the community in some capacity. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Mr. Herr? Herr, yes. Ms. Lafrenier? Lafrenier, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Touchstone, no. So we're a four to one vote on that. Is that a consensus? We don't have to be unanimous. Consensus in Japanese socioeconomic culture, that would be a no, but here in America, that is consensus in democracy. Okay. All right. I think I didn't look into that. All right. We all set? We move on? Mr. Kamala. Oh, we're talking about Mr. Kamala. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so, Mr. Kamalu, uh, list the four to six most important aspects of the individual's, individual's uh, position and evaluate the performance. Note any sick changes since the last performance review. Uh, wide grasp of all matters and issues the town faces. The town manager is very knowledgeable in all areas, whether it be town manager responsibilities or matters facing the board. Uh, Norman leads by example. He is a true leader and leads by example. Uh, the board has, uh, has noticed that the town manager is improving on delegation, hold, holds people accountable. Once delegated, Norman should steadfastly hold those individuals accountable. Um, Norman is a keen and effective negotiator. Um, and Norman, the town manager, is effective in keeping all the uh, members, the members of the select board notified on um, an update on what's going on. And um, his, uh, does a good job with grant participation and finding other funding resources. The annual goals, there are three. Goal number one, coordinated and scheduled town-wide planning meeting and all hands strategic planning meeting confirmed town priorities. Uh, he prepared and planned the meeting, uh, consulted and sought input from the stakeholders, identified facilitators, uh, organized delivery of meeting, prepared report of meeting, uh, due to COVID, the long-term view might be a lot might be lost on some. The town manager may want to revisit this again and bring it back to the forefront. A recommendation for next year would be providing handouts or visuals for attendees to capture the high points to allow member time to process. Uh, goal number two: facilitated, coordinated, and executed a healthy revised budget process for FY21, so as not to fragment the community. Scheduled and continued budget meetings with the superintendent, CFO, and school business manager continued budget advisory meetings, 
communicated budget opportunities and solutions early and often, plan and develop and delivered annual town meeting. Um, the town manager completed this, uh, hand, I'm sorry, handled this very well. There were great collaborations, especially with school superintendent, Dr. Cavanaugh, and very good collaborations with senior leaders. A recommendation for next year is providing a written summary. And goal number three, continued COVID-19 response management plan, not only for the department and community and work collaboratively, collaboratively with the health director department, um, supported HEMG planning and execution, supported and met regularly with the health services director, sought grant resources. The town's response, response to COVID was excellent, <clears throat> due in part to the town manager's collaborations, prioritization and management in his areas. Coordination with the town, I'm sorry, coordination with the school department in regards to the health track app could have been improved before uh, being announced to the public. Um, two, goal two. Mm -hmm. Can I add a comment here? You said we could jump in. Sure. So under uh, goal two, I had made that recommendation for providing written summary, but I want to clarify, he provides lots of written summaries to us. It was just particularly when the department heads came to our select board meeting and one at a time presented their budget, I thought that was really valuable, but they just prevent it, presented it verbally and didn't give us a written summary of each department one. So that would just be a suggestion okay. for next time. Uh, the three most important achievements or contributions that directly supported the town or department strategy or goals during the review period. The all hands meeting, uh, Mr. Kamala's personal investment in the success of the town is evident with this initiative. Communication fostering one town, one solution was effective and appreciated. And the COVID-19 response, the town manager's institutional support was invaluable during this pandemic. Town manager has invested a lot of time with, the, with health services director and board of health chair, scheduled appearance of the health services director for regular updates and was very effective and informative for the community. Uh, the Main Street Corridor Project, uh, that has begun this year in no small part to Norman's successful manager of the project at stakeholders. Uh, suggestions for improvement. Uh, a few members of the board would like to see the town manager be firmer when an individual board member oversteps their bounds in regards to their roles. A few members noted that town communications to the public, including ADA accessibility and translation friendly materials could be provided, make it easier for the public to easily find key town notices and budget information on the town's website. High tension situations such as Marshall Ave and the death of a 16 year old could be better communicated with the resident focus on the center school project. Um, so the overall summary, Norman performed extraordinarily this past year, especially given what a challenging year it was. The town manager is the consummate professional. He's an excellent leader and a manager that the town is fortunate to have. The town manager is also an effective manager with his direct reports. The fact that the budget passed easily and was not controversial was due to Norman's efforts with the varied and numerous stakeholders. The town manager's professionalism during the pandemic environment was exemplary. He has a calm, methodical way, is, I'm sorry, he has a calm, methodical way, is always available and seeks input consistently to get the right answer. The town hall is a cohesive team. Norman should remain in his current path and stay the course. Finally, Norman should, be, should continue to be fair and firm in negotiating collective bargaining agreements. A few members hope that Norman will continue to be the Hopkin, to be Hopkins town managers for years to come. Um, so again, we have the five uh, categories here. Um, Mr. Kamalo, would you like to uh, address the board briefly? Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank the board for its guidance and its uh, um, willingness to always chip in and help um, appropriately. And also thank the, the department heads, the staff, um, the achievements that we all celebrate would not have been possible without the excellent team effort and dedication to this community uh, by our team. Um, it goes without saying, and I would be amiss if I didn't say this, but last year, um, this year that we're completing, has been a different year for me, especially because of the lockdowns, the assistant town manager. She has assumed more responsibilities, uh, making independent decisions, and has made uh, our delegation uh, uh, works in the um, work and processes in the town office more effective. Uh, I also want to thank uh, 
the finance team led by Tim O'Leary. Uh, this year, as you may have seen, I stepped back and let them lead the budget process. Uh, the relationship that uh, they have built with the schools uh, is, is, is wonderful for this community to be looking ahead. Uh, it's also been a joy working with uh, different town boards. This past year, I spent a great deal of time working with the, the Upper Child's Trails Committee. We were making progress, we should be updating the reports to the select board. Similarly, I've also enjoyed watching Dave Dantorio uh, establish uh, his, his role amongst the planning building committee and we'll soon be coming back to the uh, select board with the report on center school. Um, most importantly, the feedback that we receive from the community, um, they, they are more tough on, on us as staff than, than the, the five of you here combined. But my point here being, we, we welcome the feedback. I sincerely appreciate the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm hearing feedback from, from you all. Um, thank you. Thank you. So again, we have the, um, the five ratings here, which I don't know where I put your thing here. Um, so uh, Mr. Nasrullah, I will go to you once again. Thank you. Um, so I think the overall, uh, overall summary really kind of sums it up. What I think, um, what I think really enabled Mr. Kamalo to excel this year was his uh, delegation and, uh, and, and bringing others along to handle some of their specific duties. And I think that showed in the end result um, that we were able to get through this, this budget year through a pandemic. We had the monthly, meet, the monthly budget. So I think um, you know, his leadership has been exemplary and uh, I would be proud to say that he, said he achieves and sometimes exceeds the expectations. Mr. Hurt. Uh, I have to give you a couple of minutes here to sort through some of this stuff and then speak a little bit about Mr. Kamala's uh, work, not only this year, but over the years. Uh, just a little bit of work first, your specifics first. On page three of four, I believe we should strike the words um, Marshall, Ab, and from that sentence. I don't think that those three words should be in the same sentence with the death of a 16 year old child. Uh, I don't want that in writing and anyone's personnel file, in, in my view. We have construction equipment up and down the corridor right now. It's on everybody's front yard. And for us to put it, construction equipment in somebody's front yard in the same sentence with the death of a 16 year old as a high tension situation, in my view, is unconscious. So I'd like that to be stricken from this record uh, or I won't move. Secondly, um, I give Mr. Kamalo uh, exceeds expectations of regularly, e.g., a banner year. Uh, I've done that for several years in a row now. Uh, I think that Mr. Kamalo um, always hits it out of the park. Uh, he does so because of his demeanor. He does so because of his intellect. He does so because of his dedication to our community. Uh, and he does so uh, out of his own sense of responsibility and accountability for what he's paid to do. And uh, that's a, it's, it's, it's rare in life and rare in business and rare in the public sector to have somebody so dedicated to their work. The, the hours that he puts in and the, the efforts that he makes to find solutions in, in, in a world where blame is generally the norm. There's a lot of blame that goes on in the public sector and there's a lot of blame uh, that goes on through the media and, and, and elsewhere. Uh, in governing. Uh, but Mr. Kamalo doesn't go to the blame. He doesn't play the blame game at all. He's all about uh, finding solutions to challenges. And I just think he's a, a, an excellent town manager. And I think this year he did an excellent job, which is why I rated him a five out of five. Uh, just a little bit of history. And Mr. Kamalo, you said some very nice things earlier in the meeting about my last meeting here uh, as a selectman. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna say the same things about you. I just did there, but I'm gonna say the same things about you sort of one-on-one -on -one too though. Uh, I interviewed Mr. Kamal. I think we went to Bertucci's in Westboro and we had uh, some pasta for lunch. Uh, and this was after we just had gone to a county manager form of government. 
the charter had just passed. We had a town manager for not even a year, I don't think. It didn't play out well. And so we were out without a town manager. I became the chair of the board. And then we went looking. I don't think it was a national search, but we did search outside of uh, the sort of immediate area. And we found Mr. Kamal. Uh, we had lunch. We had a great lunch. I had that big smile going. I love the accent. You were a very captivating person in that interview. And you haven't stopped captivating me professionally since. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, you're always there. When I pick up the phone and call you, you always answer. If you don't answer, you call me back right away. I don't even have to leave a voicemail. You call me back right away. And I really appreciate that kind of stuff and how sort of people conduct themselves. Uh, but I, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you over the years. Uh, I know a lot of town managers in the Commonwealth because of my business, and you are by far heads and shoulders above uh, all the town managers I've ever met. Maybe there's somebody out there that's better. I don't know, but I've never met. And uh, it's been a real pleasure, and you've made my life on this board uh, a lot easier than it was the first year or two when you weren't here. Uh, and for that, I will be forever thankful. You did a great job over the years. I'm looking for, I've always said this to him as well. We can be friendly, Mr. Kamalo, but we can't be friends because we work together in a situation like this. I look forward to Saturday afternoon uh, being Mr. Kamalo's friend for life. I'm really looking forward to that. But I do want those words taken out of there. I think that's wrong. Okay. Um, Ms. Lafreniere, those are great words. And normally I would cut you off. The ones I want to strike? Since the... it's sent, sent uh, your, your last meeting, uh, I let you run on. Ramble on my soapbox. I, uh, this year was just such a, a strange and, and different year. Um, and of course, it's my, only my second year of doing this. And I, I just, I have a, a few small things, but I, I love working with Norman. And I think that uh, given the circumstances, he has done yeoman service. Um, and I, I do uh, enjoy his company. More recently, he seemed to be a little more relaxed and a little more uh, outgoing, which is what I would like to see a whole lot more with the public and, and the people of the town. I would like them to see more in in that kind of atmosphere, uh, I think it would help a lot. So uh, I have given you the um, achieves, uh, exceeds expectations, sometimes exceeds expectations. And uh, I think you really exceed them all the time. <laughs> but, uh, and you should vote accordingly. Well, uh, I, there's, always, there's always room for uh, <laughs> expansion or, or uh, improvement. So I just, uh, I'd, I'd like to see all the public more often. Ms. Ritterbush. No, I think I can echo what everyone else um, said. I was being such a tough year. I was really impressed how the budget went so smoothly and passed um, easily town meeting. I didn't even hear much discussion about it in the public. So that's a huge accomplishment in tough times. And then the response to COVID was really great and the town hall was kept safe in the departments. And, um, and I really liked the all hands meeting idea. And I think it kind of a little bit of improvement going forward, but I think it was a really good initiative to get going this year. So that's why I gave the goal of achieves and meet, sometimes even exceeds expectations. Great. So uh, Mr. Kamalo, you have been uh, a workhorse for me. I am, very appreciative uh, um, of the work that you do for the town. Uh, I defend you often. There, there are certain people in this town that will say that you're overpaid. And when I tell them that you're five or six days a week, 12 to 14 to 16 hours a day, and you break it down to an hourly rate, rate if you just wanted to work an eight hour day, you could probably make more money pumping gas in Milford. Uh, you are dedicated and devoted. You, uh, none, of the, none of the things that you say are lip service. You say what you mean. You are available to me I, the last two years as the chair, uh, seven days a week, uh, sometimes very late at night, sometimes very early in the morning. Um, and I, I have, uh, I have an, uh, uh, every year I get a, a, a greater and greater appreciation of the job that you do. Um, unlike Mr. Herr, <clears throat> uh, I can be friends 
with the people that I work that I work with, um, and uh, I do consider you a friend. And uh, none of, it's not been more evident with the uh, over the last few weeks all the internal turmoil that I've had uh, with town related stuff and stuff outside. Uh, the kind messages that you've called and sent to me and conveyed to me over everything that's been going on uh, between the uh, all the people that are calling for my uh, you know, immediate, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Resignation. Removal. Resignation as a select board member uh, to some personal stuff that I have going on. So uh, I do consider you a friend uh, and I consider Chief Slamman a friend and I consider <laughs> Joe Bennett a friend. Um, so um, I appreciate all the stuff that you do. I don't want you to go anywhere. I want you to stay here. That said, I give you an achieves and sometimes exceeds expectations consistently over the last five years. So um, Irfan go in here. Irfan went to four, yeah. So um, uh, that said, I will uh, let's see. Mr. Hurdy. Mr. Chair, I move that the board select the select board advance the valuation for Mr. Kamala to William Casey for uh, final disposition. Uh, I ask that the board strike those three words in that sentence where it says Marshall Ave and, uh, and that uh, uh, this be the final review for Mr. Kamal for this year. Second. So, any further discussion? No, that's good, and I I am in agreement with the with the uh, with the striking of those words. Uh, so that said, Mr. Nasrilla, how do you vote? Nasrilla, yes. To her. Overwhelmingly, yes. Miss Lafrenia. Oh yes. Miss Ritterbush. Ritterbush, yes. That's done, yes. So welcome. I mean, not welcome, not welcome to the town, but uh, thank you, Mr. Kamala. Thank you, Mr. Um, that leads us to the town manager report. Mr. Chair, by the way, these have to go back. Yep. Personal matter. Yep. Yep. The, the reviews. Oh, oh we can't. Yep. No. Oh, we can watch it. Again. Yep. <laughs> you can. Thank you. Mr. Kamala, if you would. Town manager report um, two things. I included a much more detailed update for the town meeting, which is directly from the street. I will answer any questions that the board may have. And then secondly, I'm requesting uh, that the board allow the, the hire of the finance assistant, assistant as well as the deputy assessor positions in the finance department. In your packet, I included the rationale provided by the very particular employees. I do not have a motion. If you need a motion, we need a motion for. To lift the hiring freeze. Yeah, that's a replacement, right? It's replacement. Yes. Um, in fact, you may recall the finance administrative assistant was promoted to the assistant town accountant, and then the deputy assessor would uh, has left us for the principal assessor position. Yep. Shows yep. Mr. Chair, I move that the select board uh, lift the hiring freeze to fill the finance administrative assistant and deputy assessor positions. Which are um, current positions, not as. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Nasrullah, how do you Mr. vote? Yes. Her? Her? Or yes. Ms. Lafrenia? Lafrenia, yes. Ms. Ritterbush? Ritterbush, yes. Okay. Is that the town manager's report? That's it. That's it. Liaison reports. Mr. Nasrullah, do you have any liaison or board invites? I do not. Okay, board? Amy? We have one. Um, the Hopkins and Freedom team is offering the active bystander training. The adult one was tonight, and the one for teens, I think, is coming up next week, and a middle schooler one with parents coming up in June. So I would encourage members of the community to go to that website to attend. And then I found out recently we no longer have an ADA oversight committee, but it's on our liaison list. So I didn't know. Uh, we're we're going to, I'm sure we're going to we'll bring it back up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, at the, after election, we, every year after election, we go over that. So we can strike yeah, it. But back. Oh, strike it then. Yeah. Sure. I attended the meeting of the Marathon Fund Committee, and I'm happy to announce that they have given out $10,000 scholarships to high school graduating seniors this year. Awesome. And um, I also wanted to say that uh, Norman and I 
took a ride on the new ride bus that came into town, and we went to the senior, we went from here to the senior center and, and back, and uh, it's quite nice, and it's, I think it's going to be a big asset to the town. I hope people will go out and use it. Uh, and I have none. <clears throat> Future board agenda items, uh, Mr. Nasrilla? None here. Mr. Her or board members? No. Uh, so generally, Mr. Nasrilla, I would ask you for my, uh, my favorite motion of the evening. However, as the chair of the uh, select board, I would like to afford Mr. Her as much time as he possibly could take up or need to address us as a board, Mr. Kamalo and the town for his 14 years of service with us. Just a couple of simple thoughts and thank you, Mr. Chair, for a couple of minutes here. Uh, I've had the pleasure of serving with a lot of people on the board over the years. Uh, Mike Shepard was one of them. Uh, in my first year, Mike was here. And when Mike wrapped it up uh, a couple of years after that, he taught me something, he taught me a lot of things over the years, but one thing he said was, the most rewarding jobs that you will do in your life are those where you don't get paid. And I thought it was a great line then, and I think it's a great line that applies to today too, for me personally. Uh, this has been a great job. I've really enjoyed it an awful lot. I've learned so much from so many people. Uh, I've had the great pleasure of serving with so many good volunteers here on this board and working with the school committee members and the planning board and the board of health and on and on, all the volunteers in town. Uh, it truly does take a village. Uh, but Mike summed it up really well then, and I would just echo that again. Uh, we don't get paid to do this work. Uh, some in town think we do, <laughs> and you'll hear that eventually. Um, but uh, it is a very rewarding job. I encourage others to continue uh, or get involved and help our town government going forward. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to point out is my um, never ending uh, and you know, constant respect I have for the employees of the town of Hopkinton, uh, those that work in the senior center and the DPW, uh, police, fire, the library, town hall, I'm not sure what I'm forgetting, but I have learned uh, over the years the incredible amount of work that they do on behalf of our community and the, the dedication they have uh, for their jobs uh, on behalf of the community. It really, that, that was one of the great joys for me in the job was watching uh, the employees. I mean, just look at, look at the common and see the pride that everyone takes in their work here in Hopkinton. And a lot of that flows from Mr. Kamalo and Ms. Lazarus uh, on down throughout the organization. Uh, it's Organizational Behavior 101. We all take on the personality or the organization takes on the personality of its leaders. That's standard business school stuff. Uh, and I think it applies here in Hopkinton too. Uh, but I've always uh, had great admiration and always will for all the employees in the town of Hopkinton. Uh, it's just been a real pleasure working with them. And uh, I look forward to seeing them around town here in the coming years. That's been a great ride. I've enjoyed 96, 7% of it. <laughs> And uh, I wish the next board continued success. I think the town's on a great path right now. It's been on a good path for a long time. A lot of it is because of Mr. Kamala, Ms. Lazarus and their teams. Um, and I'd encourage to stay on that path. Thank you all very much. And thanks to the citizens for allowing me to do this for uh, 12 years. And I look forward to town meeting next year where I'll go to the microphone and have a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Nasrullah, I am not going to allow you to make that motion. I'm going to let Mr. Herr make the final motion. Gladly. I request the motion to adjourn the meeting. You're no, I'm not the chair. <laughs> what am I doing here? Just make the motion. I move. Oh, I move to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Why am I telling you policy and procedure? <laughs> I move to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Back in. <laughs> Any further discussion? Two. Back to where we had our executive session. I don't think that we are, are we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, I also wanted to do the introduction. Some of you may not have met Jay. Jay Hill is the executive administrator. I doesn't show up on public that much, but he's been, uh, it, it was at the final town meeting. He's here tonight. He's been uh, a good one side. Uh, good back. job, guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Nasrullah, how do you vote? Nasrullah, yes. Her, yes. Mr. yes. Mr. Friendly, yes. Mr. Riddlebush, yes. Headstone, yes. yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thank everyone. You. And thank really, you, Brian. Really, really above and beyond.